Chryso friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where we only make capsule wardrobes, apparently. So as you all know by now, Tornado came with partner and I to Gulf War this year. In order to camp for an entire week, I knew I'd have to make some more clothes for them. Since a capsule wardrobe worked well for me in the past, I figured it would be a good, quick way to clothe them for the duration. They already had a gray flannel dress, as you may remember, a brown wool tunic that I made at the same time but didn't document, a blue-green tunic I used to make the pattern for that flannel dress, and a pair of black pants to go with. In order to round out that wardrobe, I'm planning on making two dresses, a yellow and a purple one, a black apron dress, two more tunics, light green and orange, and another pair of pants. Round that out with a plum Viking inspired coat with a hood because everything is cooler with a hood. And that's a respectable capsule wardrobe. The light is changing. I both love and hate natural lighting. <sighs> My goal for this project isn't to be, there it goes again. There it goes. If you could just get it together. All right, I guess we fake it. My goal for this project isn't to be super historically accurate, although the general construction of most of the clothing is at least historically adequate, but to make an interchangeable set of clothing that Tornado won't hate quickly enough to be done by the start of war that will last until they outgrow everything. So with that said, everyone go grab your cuppa. I managed to get my hands on the new release from Tabletop Tees, Percival de Rolo. It's a Russian caravan style tea with lots of smokiness and just a hint of burnt sugar notes. It's strong and perfectly evokes the campfires I will inevitably be missing by the time this video goes live. Let's get into it. These pants are probably the most ahistoric of all the pieces I'm going to be making. Tornado doesn't love the feel of leggings, and Chosses and Brays are right out. But they love poofy pirate pants, so that's what we're going with. The pattern is just a pajama pants pattern that I've had approximately forever and traced onto sturdier paper, with extra fullness added to the hems for maximum poof. Elastic at the waistband and hems, and there's one item ready to be checked off the list in less than an afternoon. I didn't get a ton of footage for the coat project since I was frantically sewing while staring down the barrel of a 35 degree week and a kid with no jacket that fit them. Pattern and construction are substantially the same as my Viking coat with a few modifications. I made the front neckline V a bit higher to cover more of the body when closed, 
I added pockets to the side seams because where else would we put mittens? And Tornado specifically requested a hood. I did end up lining the coat with a navy cotton lawn that matched the flowered pockets, cuffs, and hood lining perfectly in order to make sure that Tornado wouldn't have any wool touching their skin when the coat was on. I still need to add closures to the coat, but the spiral hook and eyes that I wanted were out of stock at the time. We ended up just pinning it closed with a penannular brooch it wore, and that worked fine. I wanted to make at least one apron dress for Tornado since it immediately doubles the versatility of any long dress. Since one of the dresses will be purple with black facings and the other yellow, I thought black would be a good color choice.
I'm using this cutting diagram from Viking Clothes by Vigdis, link in the description, which allows me to get a torso section divided into thirds, skirt sections that flare out to the point in between, and gores to add even more fullness. My red apron dress was cut on the same pattern. The straps are made by sewing one long strip of fabric in half and then turning that tube right side out and pressing it flat. Then I will sew short loops in front and long loops in the back that can be attached to each other with turtle brooches. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members on Quissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to watch me make four tunics at the same time. And now for the biggest part of this project, the tunics. Since all of them are going to be cut on the same pattern, except for two of them being long and two short, I'm going to be batch processing them assembly line style. I'm cutting both tunics at the same time, one piece of fabric on top of each other. This is so much faster than cutting them separately. This does only work with fabric that's a bit grippy, like this cotton broadcloth. I wouldn't use this technique with something like silk or velvet. I ended up cutting the purple and yellow dresses on different days, or I have cut those the same way.
The next step is to sew the shoulder seams together and add neckline facings. The dresses will have decorative facings flipped to the outside, while the tunics will have utilitarian facings cut from muslin and turned to the inside. I've got all three of the neckline facings in, and normally what I would do at this step would be to fold under the edges and finish them by hand. But since I'm batch processing these and I'm really going for speed of construction, I am actually going to end up saving these for last because I can take them with me and do this step away from my sewing machine. So instead, I'm going to move directly onto the sleeves. The sleeves are sewn in the usual way, which for me means that I sew them to the dress centered on the shoulder seams and then add the square underarm gussets. Once those are in, I sew the rest of the sleeve seam from gusset to wrist and finish all of those seams at once. Normally I don't pink seams to finish them, but I'm doing an experiment. Linen fabric is usually too loosely woven and ravelry. Yes, it's a technical term to be effectively finished by pinking. One wash and everything starts to just fall apart. But since Tornado prefers cotton to linen most of the time, I think that pinking will work okay for this dress. After the sleeves are all finished, I sew the skirt gores together, finish that seam, and then add those gores to the side seams. This allows me to make sure that the gore point is nice and sharp at the waist. Once all the pieces have been assembled and finished, either by pinking or serging, it's time to hem. Up until now, I've been using the same thread for everything. A medium gray all-purpose thread that is generally innocuous on all of the fabric colors. Since the construction seams aren't going to be seen, it doesn't matter too much, and using one color allows me to batch process sewing steps very quickly. But since hems are visible from the outside, matching threads are more important.
Thank you for coming along with me today. I am super satisfied with this project and more importantly, Tornado is too. I am proud of having made a six piece addition to their SCA closet lead up to Gulf War. Of course, it was cold enough that they mostly lived in the flannel and the wool and the coat, but still, they'll have a range of options for the next event. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell if you like taking your chances. If you're interested in finding me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and those links will all be in the description box. I will also post the link to my coffee where you can leave a one-time tip, browse my web shop, or join my membership tiers for additional content and a thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Well.